Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first hot topic says lawmakers propose ending second term for presidents and governors. Now, the bill seeking to a single term of six years for the president and state governors was brought up last Monday by 35 members of the House of Representatives. It also canvasses the rotation of the presidency among the six pol geopolitical zones of the country and the provision for a second vice president. Now, joining us to make sense of all of this is Biodun Shawomi, he's a political analyst. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Okay, so we're talking about, uh, you know, a single term for president, for the president and governors in Nigeria, and then a rotation um, with the geopolitical zones um, for the, the president, and then having a second vice president as well. With this, right, this is a bill that has been presented by at least 35 members of the House of Representatives. I want to get your take. Do you think this is a good way to go? Do you think this is what we need, um, having one single term of about six years, or we should just stick to what we have? Maybe that works. Well, um, but it has you know, um, advantage and disadvantages. So we cannot just totally say this is correct, this is not correct, this is just another model, you know, of um, democracy. Um, if you look at other clients with the problems we have, um, particularly multi-ethnic countries like Nigeria, um, is not necessarily, um, the solution is not necessarily having one single term. I mean, India is a very good example. It's a huge, the largest democracy in the world. Uh, it's not, not, not necessarily about single term. What you see cropping up is Nigerians are trying to evolve a local model, you know, to solve what they perceive to be their own problem. One, um, the zones within the country, if you are to take account of the six um, uh, zone system, um, who are complaining that they've been marginalized. And it is true uh, that at least the Southeast have not been able, you know, to produce the president of the country in recent times, um, which is correct, at least in the last 25 years. That has not happened, um, apart from under the military. Now, we have people who felt that, look, this uh, two times of um, four, four years, eight years is too long. Um, therefore, it will take a long time before it could get to their own turn. They also have their own valid point. But the issue is about issue. The issue is about how do you evolve a kind of collegiate system like the Switzerland model, where there will be unity, the country will be uh, better managed, and at the same time, we do not create a single term where a president would think once I've been elected. There is no incentive you know, to perform. I can do what I like. At the end of six years, I will leave the place anyway. Whereas the current system, which provides for two terms, you know, clearly uh, means that a president who wants to embark on legacy projects and um, uh, do his best within the first four years with a view to be able to you know, uh, present himself for a second term in office. So there's an incentive in that way, in, in the current system. What is being proposed will not necessarily create the incentive for performance, but create a situation where everybody will have a sense of belonging. And at the end of the day, the, ruling, the Nigerian ruling class has not proved, you know, to be so patriotic to the extent that within a single term of six years, uh, without um, any incentive, they will uh, do their utmost. Uh, many people don't think so, and I tend to share that viewpoint particularly when you look at the problems besetting the country currently. I don't think the issue is about single term. I think it's about restructuring the country. If we fail to restructure the country and we are only tinkering with this system, you know, of a centralized a form of uh, unitary government, uh, we will only be you no know, chasing shadows. If you have a single term, six years, two vice presidents, you only have more, you know, quangles, you know, more offices, more aides, more, you know, expenses to incur governance. And we can't run away from that. We already know that 21 billion has been used to build the house for the current vice president. So when you have a second one with all the entourage, you know, you need more presidential fleets and all that. Uh, I don't think that is the way to go. Yes, we can have a single term of six years, but then there has to be some safeguard, you know, for 
when a leader is uh, not performing as expected, then how do you get that leader removed? We've already seen with the National Assembly that it's a no-go area. Rather than going for that, I would rather suggest that we should be going for a unicameral legislature. You know, we should scrap, you know, one of the two houses of in the National Assembly, either the Senate, most more likely the Senate, and then have the House of Rep, which is more representative. That will not only save cost, but it will also, you know, ensure that we are able to, you know, uh, carry out proper oversight over the executive functions. Otherwise, currently, the power to even remove the president lies, you know, with uh, the Senate, to impeach him lies with the Senate, rather than it being concentrated. So that, for me, I don't think the single term option with a second vice president will solve the problem. I think it's more that we should restructure. You can even have three regions. That's fine. We've done it before. But the most important thing is to ensure that everybody has sense of responsibility. The moment you restructure the fractious issues around the um, um, inclusion, you know, will disappear because the regions will now be more important you know, than the center. The resources will be uh, devolved to the region. And political power will lie with the region only with the center, which is the coordinating center, responsible for monetary policy, customs, um, foreign affairs, and um, uh, the military. So I think that's the way to go rather than what they're suggesting currently. Deeply into our nation is corruption. And many people will tell you that the reason why we're not flourishing as a nation is because we're so corrupt and we've allowed corruption to become the norm, to become the new thing, <coughs> to become okay in Nigeria. And so do you think that it matters whichever system of government you know, we practice if we're deciding to have you know, one term of six years or st stick with the two terms of um, four years, which you know, results to having eight years in office? Do you think it matters, especially if we are still going to be corrupt? So even if we're doing one term of six years, that means whoever the president is or the governor can still decide to be corrupt um, and loot public funds and deny you know, ba citizens the basic amenities or the basic necessities of life. Do you think that matters at all? Or we should be looking at corruption and how to face it head on? Well, um, I'll start by saying that I'm one of those who used to think that the corruption is a pain of our development. Mm. I no longer think so. Because when you look at some of the greatest cities on the heart, they were built with process of corruption. That does not necessarily make them bad. Go to any country, go to Italy. Italy has more mafia like, mafioso economy than any other country in the world. Mm. If you go to China, they still have problems of corruption. Go to Japan, same thing. Go to Israel, at least about four prime ministers in Israel, you know, have had to face um, allegations or trial for corruption. But it never became the bin of their development. They kept advancing. I think in our own situation, we are corrupt, but we are not advancing, we are not developing. Mm. And the difference is simply because of impunity. In other climes, people are found to be corrupt are not allowed to get it. You pay the price. In some countries, you commit an hacking. In some countries, you get a life sentence. In others, you get shot. We've seen an example of what happened to a corrupt, a corrupt minister in Burkina Faso, who was public, publicly flogged until he disclosed where the loot you know, were kept. I don't necessarily subscribe to that extrajudicial uh, punishment. In my view, people should be processed through the criminal justice system. The rule of law should prevail. But it tells you that other countries, including in Africa, are taking corruption more seriously, the battle against corruption more seriously than the way we are doing it. We have seen people on trial, endless trial. Let me give you a good example. Ayofarish's case, since Obasanjo's uh, tenure over the chicken, the poultry scam, till today has not been resolved. It has not resulted in any acquittal or conviction. So how do you create a duty? A, a criminal justice system that perpetually people will be on trial or a criminal justice system like in the case of Odili that would say a, a court will pronounce that 
somebody should not be investigated or prosecuted, you know, even if the evidence, you know, exists. For me, we have a major problem, you know, with corruption. But it's not necessarily the pain of our development. What we need to do is to ensure that every corrupt person is processed through the criminal justice system and if found guilty, you know, is sentenced accordingly. Otherwise, we will continue to have this problem. I mean, when you look at the private sector, is it the issue of corruption? Is that why we do not have um, um, uh, more industries in Nigeria? Is that why we are not pumping enough gas, even to supply our own country? It's not about corruption. And some of it is about mismanagement or lack of foresight on the part of our leaders, and which is quite unfortunate. Yes, a single term may, may uh, end up you know, making some people to feel that, well, I don't need to be accountable, they can easily lose the wealth. You know, yes, that is correct. But it's, it could also mean some people or some governors will look at it differently and say, look, I only have six years, so I need to leave legacy to get, I need to do my utmost. We don't know until when we get there. But the fact of the matter is, I don't think that is the solution. We need to restructure this country back and devolve, you know, resources back you know, to where they are from, so that uh, they can be applied appropriately, you know, uh, for the development of the country. What you see currently going on is everybody thinks it's a federal resource, and so therefore, since uh, it belongs to federal government, it does not belong to, so people think uh, they can uh, take as much as they, they, they need, you know. But I don't think that is right. If the resources, if all, for instance, is controlled by those who own the oil, they will be better accountable to their people. People will stop focusing on the fact that they will look at their own leaders and state them and then ask them questions. And the same thing will go for all sectors of the economy. The current system promotes state indolence. If you look at the situation where if a state generates power, you have to pump it uh, into the national grid until the vast percent. There's no other state that would go into it because whoever produces it, all of us will share it. It's, it's a form of state indolence, and it's the same thing. If everybody goes to Abuja every year, you know, every month, and then collects um, uh, handouts, and then go back to their state, what's the incentive for them to generate resources? I mean, if you look at the states that are doing very well today, apart from uh, Lagos and probably Ugun, you know, the rest are all producing states. You know, they're only doing well simply because of the revenue from oil, not because of manufacturing activity within their own country. And that is not as a result of corruption. It's as a result of the need for restructuring. The current structure promotes state indolence. Nobody should be going to Abuja to collect money. The resources belong to the states to start with. And therefore, every state will be able to look at their own environment mm -hmm. and then you know, ensure that they are able to uh, mm -hmm. invest in productive activity. Mm. Okay, so I have, um, I mean, there's been mixed reactions about this, and obviously some people are for, some people are against. So let's just take some, um, some things that some people have said. Now, Deli Alake has said, it's a welcome development. It will set the country on a more reliable foundation that will bring a lot of advantage. Um, another thing that was said, which was being said by Arabambi, said it would end marginalization. It will reduce the pressure of infighting for second term, which leads to our politic, uh, political office holders to steal money to prosecute their second term project. And um, the Ad Adewale, who is an ADP chieftain, said it should be five years. I think it's a positive development. So in all of this, of course, these people are for it. With what they've said, do you think it's going to end marginalization? Do you think it's, you know, a very welcome development and it should be five years um, instead of six years? What do you think? I, I don't think so. The issue of marginalization is far beyond that. Mm. Let me give a good example. In Ogun State, the Yela people, that's the people from Ogun West, will continue to, uh, they, they, they kept complaining about marginalization. And even though uh, is a huge part of the state, you know, and is a whole senatorial district. They've not been able to have access to political power. The simple reason is because politics is a game of numbers. The numbers, you know, do not favor them. So it's the same thing that will happen when you uh, create a single term of um, six years within a zone. There will be people within a zone who will not have access to that power, and they will continue to complain of marginalization. 
We should not forget that power is not South Alaka. People have to fight for power, and it's about a, a game of numbers. So if you don't have the numbers, you may not necessarily get there. And we should not forget that. I can give you a good example. Look, look at Ogun again with your permission. Ogun State, five local governments in Ogun State alone accounts for 50% of the votes. And that uh, five local governments are in one senatorial district. So there is no way you will not continue to have marginalization. That's not the issue. The issue is to build an inclusive society. Those who are crying marginalization are the elites. They are members of the ruling class who wants to have you know, a share of power, with, you know, claiming that they want to hold it on behalf of their people. We should move away and then start thinking about people's capacity, irrespective of where you come from, so that you can render your service to your fatherland. The current thinking is that, oh, people are being marginalized, so why can't we also have access to power? Access to power on behalf of who? If they loot, are they looting for you and I? No, they're looting for themselves. And that is what we've been seeing in Nigeria. And that is why some people are crying, uh, you know, of marginalization. But if you build a stakeholder inclusive economy, you will not have those issues arise. Um, or if they do, it will be very, very minimal. But the current situation where it is almost impossible for somebody from Southeast you know, to, um, uh, to produce the governor, uh, the president, simply because of the numbers, uh, for me, is totally um, unacceptable. We need to restructure and create a situation where the Southeast, as a region, will find some inclusiveness within the Southeast, while the Southwest or the Northwest will find some inclusiveness within the Northwest. Otherwise, the current structure which we have in the country, whether you say it's um, about six, uh, one single tenure of six years or not, the, the fact of the matter is when you put down the figures and look at Northwest and Southwest, they account for 50%, about 50% of the votes in Nigeria. So, therefore, it would always come down, you know, to a game of numbers, and uh, the elites will negotiate the way they want. So, you will have people within a section of um, any state or zone you know, complaining that uh, they are marginalized. So I don't think it will solve the problem. What we need to do is to restructure. Mm. All right, so let's move over to some opinions that are quite against. Now, the CUPP spokesperson said, we need purposeful leadership, put in place appropriate sanctions for those who loot the treasury and deny citizens the basic necessities of life. Now, Huriwa has said it's a misplaced priority. What we need is equity. We have more serious issues such as insecurity and our dwindling economy. Um, also, um, the um, public secretary of Ondo State for the PDP says we need diligent leadership, not single tenure. He said it's not the tenure that is the problem, but a sense of duty, diligence, and accountability that are the main issues. Whether a single six-year tenure or two terms of four years each, a thief will still be a thief. What do you think about these comments? Yeah. Do economy, misplaced priority, a thief will always be a thief, <laughs> all of this. What do you think about it? If you look at all those submissions, we're only trying to find accommodation, you know, within the existing system. Whether it's about single term, we're just trying to think with it. Whether it's about security, we're trying to think with it. Just, just go back and think about what Boko Haram said um, was their goal. They said... Um, they're against Western education, yeah. you know, and that was where they started, and they confined themselves, you know, in their region with all their uh, terrorist activities or insurgency, whichever way you want to describe them. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you will see that many people complain about uh, nomadic um, farming, you know, the, the grazing issue and all that. So it created more problems for different people in different parts of the country. The fact of the matter is is not just about um, finding accommodation within the existing system. It's actually the need for restructuring that should be addressed. Otherwise, what you have is when you provide a single uh, tenure uh, of six years, will that solve the security problem? No. The challenges we are faced with currently is that the, we are different people who should be united we can find unity in our diversity. In the Southwest, if their priority is education, they should be able to, you know, to, 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 to promote education. 
If in the north is um, northwest is uh, farming, for instance, they should be able to do that. If in the northeast is um, animal husbandry, they should be able to do that without creating problems for other sections of the country. We have seen the problem faced by Benue, how they even tried to deal with the problems to say, look, we will not accept, you know, uh, open grazing. And then we saw, you know, the nomadic farmers saying, well, we're going to have to graze on your land. And we've seen how many people, you know, that have been killed as a result of this. It's simply because of the current loose uh, federal system where decisions, major decisions are taken from our future, where 56, 52.68% uh, of the resources is controlled by the center, not by the states. You know, a state like Benue you know, gets less than 1% you know, of federal allocation. And whereas the res many resources are from different parts of the states of the federation, I don't think that is right. That's a lopsided structure. We need to restructure in a way that each region will be able, or its own, be able to set their own priority and develop in line, you know, with the hopes and expectations of their people. That is the only way to build an inclusive um, society. Not thinking with the present, you know, unitary or, or quasi unitary or quasi federal structure and thinking that will solve the problem. You know, it's like scratching uh, rather than going for for surgery is like a, a, a taking an analgesic, you know, just trying to suit the pain, mm. uh, you know, the, but the fact of the matter is we have fundamental problems with security, and that cannot be addressed within the existing um, federal structure. We need to devolve power to the states, including patient of state police. Mm. I know that I know state police has been, you know, one of the topics that we've spoken about lately, um, having to have pe get people there who understand the terrain and can actually secure the lives and properties of Nigerians. But, you know, moving forward with all of this, I don't know if this bill is going to be passed for, um, you know, single term. I remember when President Olusegun Obasanjo was about to leave office, he tried for a third term, actually, um, that did not work. And I'm sure with this now, some people might just say, you know what, we'd rather have the whole eight years or others would say, okay, I don't mind. Let me just do what I'm there to do. But do you think this is going to help with our leadership structure whereby we understand that or whoever the politician is understands that I'm only here one time. So I can make my mark one time. I can do my bit one time. And the moment that is done, I cannot come back. Do you think this would help our leadership to become better? From available evidence on how our ruling class are behaving in Nigeria, I don't think so. Mm. You know, you are like the issue of corruption a short while ago. Yeah. Um, some people will see it as positive, while some people will take the negative end and say, look, this is an opportunity for me. I mean, we have a governor who just left power, being accused of 80 billion yes. uh, um, um, loot. Mm -hmm. um, so you can imagine if the governor is in for six, a single six years and is determined to loot, there's no way you can stop him. You will loot until when it is power. Uh, because we have not removed the immunity being enjoyed by the governors. The same thing goes for a president who decides either to be corrupt or to mismanage. You can't do anything for six years, and that's quite unfortunate. <clears throat> that is why, even on the two-term uh, tenure issue, uh, they will still do exactly what they want to do. What we need to do is to restructure the country in a way that people will be more accountable, you know, in their zones or to their own people, um, rather than us align the ruling class to play, you know, one uh, zone against the other, uh, which is what is going on currently. I mean, those who are advantageous in the current um, system will not necessarily want to give it up, except we restructure the country. That is the only way we can ensure that we can produce an inclusive leadership and then be able to curtail corruption. Everybody sees the system currently as they don't have a sense of belonging. Well, the people of Nigeria, we did not make the constitution, the military made it, made wife it, pass it to us, we are only amending it. The sense of ownership is not there. So we need to go back, redesign our country, put it to referendum, and then, you know, start implementing, you know, uh, the provisions of the constitution. The rule of law should be the basis, you know, on which our society should be organized. And therefore, we need to build a robust criminal justice system that will also be able to deal not only with security challenges, but also, you know, with corruption. Mm. 
Mm. That cannot be done under the present, you know, existing order. Okay, well, I hope that all of the things that you've highlighted would be um, taken down and hopefully we get to tweak our system and restructure, like you said. One of the things you said was restru restructuring so that we can be more accountable. And I know that transparency and accountability is the only thing that can make people have that sense of belonging and whereby we can push Nigeria to a place where we want, which is a flourishing future for us and, you know, the generations to come. Anyways, Bia, I want to say thank you for coming. It's always a pleasure having a conversation with you. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yeah. We've been speaking with Biodun Shomi. He's a political analyst. And we've just been talking about the fact that there's been a bill to rotate um, the single term for, president, for the presidency and the governors. And this is going to be a single term of six years with an additional vice president. We'll go on a short break and we'll return. We'll be talking about the Super Eagles. Well, Finiti Judge has quit the Super, the super Eagles. Please stay with us. <laughs>